here's Ari Fleischer talking about the leaker. And again, I think this is important from a political standpoint. They should not. They're, they're going out and making this as if this leaker was, you know, coming from the clerks who work for either Sotomayor, um, Kagan, K- uh, Kagan or KBJ. And yeah. Yeah. there is absolutely no reason to believe that is the case. Not mathematically, not strategically. There is no value strategically i think politically to well also this leak for those who they were are, ready to go huh they were ready to go ari fleischer i mean more than anything it's like oh you had a hundred of your top uh surrogates out there on the same messaging like in an hour that's interesting i'm so curious they, I mean, yeah, there was there was a lot of message discipline on this. I mean, I don't know if they planned this or they were aware of it or whatnot, although I would imagine, I would imagine, you know, but I, I do think that this was someone on the right and they did it for, well, at the very least, there are two outcomes, I think, that are that are clear is that it's, it's, it's you know, lock in some votes and... Or it's somebody that thinks that if we get ahead out of this naively... From a press perspective, that it might deter them from fully repealing it. There could be somebody who has I really do no think that's strategy. A, there's a possibility. I mean, of course, it's a possibility. It could it could have been just like somebody working at the copy shop? I mean, uh, you know, apparently that's where, to the extent that there were leaks. It could in have the been past. a Roberts clerk that is like, I'm a conservative, <laughs> but I don't know. This is scary. I have a relationship with this political reporter, and here's uh, it's scary to repeal Roe altogether. Here's this crazy brief that Alito wants Roberts to sign off on. I mean, like it really could be that simple. I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I don't think so because being a clerk is not like being a clerk at a law office. Being a Supreme Court justice clerk is solidifying your 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 career in law for life. It is so important to your career. You don't um, get there unless you're incredibly ambitious and you want to be sitting on that court exactly. yourself. And you don't get there exactly. unless you are doing the bidding of of like, you know, I, I, I just find it hard to believe there was just one individual who leaked this like that. I, I just I, I find it hard to believe these, you know, the you, you cannot find more sort of like um, ambitious, um, true believers than these than these clerks. Um, and I, I find it hard to believe that somebody was freelancing on this. I really do. Ask Ted Cruz. Uh, here is Ari Fleischer coming out with the line that seems to be completely consistent by all the right wing talkers. Um, what really troubles me, not about the ruling itself, if that's the ruling itself, I, I accept and respect that ruling. Oh, how big of him. Leaker. Make no mistake, Sean, this is an insurrection against the Supreme Court. I've already oh seen people God. on the left celebrating this leaker, calling him brave, trying to throw a Hail Mary mm. to stop the ruling from being issued. Who at the Supreme Court will trust each other now if they know that their drafts are going to be leaked, just like everything else in Washington? The Supreme Court seemed to be the last institution standing that had internal <clears throat> integrity. Oh. This is an insurrection against the court, and it needs to be found who did it, and whatever legal means can be taken against them needs to be taken. They're so lazy. They just want to like they want to undercut all of the left's critiques of the Republicans and their extremism. So they're trying to water down what insurrection means to go after a leaker on the Supreme Court. I mean, that's yeah, it's doing double duty. But I mean, this is this is a you know, this is a gift to them, because if this comes out and there is no secondary second order issue, what if this comes out in June and it's just that and it's and it's the Alito ruling? Um, there is no way to de- deflect from it. Make it about something else. If it comes out in June, oh, they'll now, find something else. If it no, There's no, no. Always, but my point know. is, uh, uh, the, this is just yeah, I don't know. It's wrapped up in a bow. I think, um, but. I, I really think there's a distinct possibility that someone was freaked out by, I mean, again, look, we have a difference of opinion on what the motivations could be. Um, I, I don't really think we'll know. I don't know. I really hope whoever it is, I hope they don't get caught, basically, because I, I find some of the rhetoric coming out about how we need to prosecute and look into this 
problematic. But there's no law. There, there's no law. I hope but, they yeah. get caught. But and John then Kennedy's on the floor talking about the, getting an investigation. There's, F, you know, uh, calls well, for an clip. FBI into, distraction. investigation into this. It's and good for White House, though, because he says, like, I don't know what law you would uh, get, but here it is. This is um, uh, John Kennedy. Uh, this is the judiciary hearing was just coincidentally having a hearing on on judges, right? I mean, on on uh, what specifically on like uh, the uh, I, I can't remember. Uh, so they were having a, a hearing on something else, and it immediately turned into uh, the question of the leak. And here is uh, John Kennedy um, going off on this, and and White House going like, uh, what, why? What, what are, what's the legal implications here? None. This, uh, this misguided zealot who leaked this document um, took away from the American people. I look forward to your testimony. Thank you, Senator Kennedy. It's an interesting separation of powers question. Why FBI agents from the executive branch should be running around within the Supreme Court this is interviewing White House. clerks and staff and justices themselves um, if it's not appropriate for Congress to exercise its legislative powers with regard to those standards. So it will be interesting to see that. Well, let me respond to that, Mr. Chairman. Um, as you know, the United States Supreme Court has its own police force, and I don't think it's at all uncommon to have police forces cooperate. And what I hope happens, everybody's entitled now to his opinion. That. But what I hope happens is that that uh, the authorities at the Department of Justice, who I believe will be called in, should be called in, put the full force and power of their agency to find out who leaked this document and to prosecute that person oh civilly and criminally to the full extent of the law. I don't care who it is. I don't care what their politics is. This isn't right. Benghazi? I guess we'll begin by trying to identify what law that person might have violated. Let me turn to <laughs> Chairman Durbin to uh, yes. make his opening. Good point. And, and, I mean, there is no law. You don't even have a conflict of interest law that deals, even a code of ethics for the Supreme Court justices. And there is no law. I, I would like them to find the, the leaker and, and, and fire them. I wouldn't want, you know, again, like um, this is not I don't I don't think this is a, a whistleblow type of situation. But I don't think, you know, to have the FBI on there because the justification for the FBI is because they have their own police force. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't. Like the only reason why they don't have the FBI is because they don't have their own police force. And also in the context it's, of like all like the so-called like Russia Gate stuff, like wasn't the whole isn't the whole big thing they're all like upset about like intelligence agencies and other agencies coordinating with each other or cooperating <laughs> with each other? Like I right. thought John Kennedy would not be cool with the FBI and whatever Supreme well, Court body would. But that's why he, he calls him a zealot. Other. He calls the leaker is uh, the the him now. I'm sounding yeah. like Ari Fleischer. Him. him or her calls the leaker a zealot. Um, and you know, no, it's just that's not ours. Uh, we like our zealots. <laughs> I, I, it's another Benghazi. Yeah. This is this is their tactic now. It's like hearing after hearing after hearing and distract, you know, get your base outraged at the other party for doing some sort of injustice. This is totally manufactured, in my opinion. Like, this is just classic. This is their strategy that they've been doing for the last 10 years. Find one very long story with legs, drag it out, excite people into this. You know, Hunter Biden's not working right now. So yep. this is the next piece. There is no doubt in my mind that. No doubt. They, they I mean, it's. The, and, and they're and they're very good at this. There's not going to be a story that is, or let me put it this way: the number of stories that are going to exclusively look at the material implications of this decision is going to be diminished because, and we're doing it here because of the leak. Exactly, that's right. And and, and so there's the, it's always going to be competing for airtime uh, with. The, the the leak in and of itself. Uh, well, waking up this morning, I had CBS on, and that was exactly my response was like, why is this the first three stories and not 
the, I mean, Emma, you made a tweet last night about it uh, and how quickly, how quickly they were willing to just compromise on on the magnitude of the real story here because there's a bunch of Republicans and their PR firms sending out press releases, pitching these stories to the newsroom saying, you got to talk about the we're getting ready to investigate who it was. And they are all so they cover it. The media is primed to take this bait, right? I mean, um, yeah, at the very least, the Republicans are, are seizing on this opportunity because they understand that there's nothing that our media apparatus cares about more than norms and process. And if they can make it seem like this insidious undercutting of those things and make it about that, then that can be the conversation. Um also, the dignity of an institution. If Democrats want to go hardcore, suddenly they care so much about the dignity of this institution, just preserving. Yet they don't give an F about the insurrectionists storming the Capitol. It's not helpful to, to I think, to to laud the Supreme Court in any way anymore. Like we have to talk. I mean, there there needs to be like a full on political uh, messaging campaign from the Democrats that this is an extremist body um, and that they need to be stopped. I, I, I mean, I, I the, the that's the, that's how I feel about, you know, the, the politicization of the court. But I, I don't know. But, we'll but there's so many steps until getting there. I mean, I hear you, Emma. And and that's but we have we can't even get through with the filibuster. I mean, there's so many other things that we can't get that are simpler, like lower hanging fruit at this point. I'm not saying we shouldn't do it all at once and transform the entire conversation, but as long as we have these existing people in leadership. Yeah. The, um, it's, it's, it's not happening. Well, the, uh, the, uh, but I think the value of it is politically. I mean, I, I think, you know, one of the completely understood stories of the 2016 election was keeping Merrick Garland or uh, keeping Obama from filling that seat. And I, right. you know, and I've never seen a, in my mind, a sufficient analysis of how many votes came in because that seat was empty and the left right. broad left, the Democratic Party has never had the appreciation. And, 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 and to be fair, Biden's administration has been far more aggressive in filling, uh, you know, judicial seats, but the left has never been attuned to this and frankly what emma is suggesting about the court it was al gore's failure and joe Lieberman. Mm. well al gore's failure <laughs> um and the democratic party's failure to take a shining example of yeah. the politicization of that court in 2000 and they refused to do it at that time and these things they accrue the, 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 the interest develops on these you um you, you it, it the the debt that you owe the vacuum that you've created gets filled and they just keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it and when the voting rights act was struck down or at least you know uh, section five was eviscerated um i mean on and on and on the the there is a failure to appreciate the importance of that court because it is so politicized. Well, the lesson's been learned now. I mean, really, it's it's easy in retrospect to say Al Gore could have done things differently, and and I think we all agree that he could have done things differently. But I said it. Did at the he time, anticipate? Fair. at the time. Did did anybody ever anticipate the, the dumpster fire of the next like eight years afterwards? But now the lessons have been learned and the strategy remains the same. I mean, yeah, today, Chuck, yeah. yes, I'm, I, yes, you did. But but say Democratic, you know, institutionalists, no, whatever. I was, Party uh, institutionalists. I was making but you say institutionalists, it. right? You say and that is the that is the fundamental problem. They are yeah. 400 times more committed to institutions and norms than they are to winning, to winning and actually delivering. And I'm. Um, but if, yeah. But if back then. So say that it, prior to. 2000, plenty of flaws. You know, Democrats lost the House for 30 years in 1992. They could have adjusted their strategy. But in their minds, at that point, it hadn't gone completely, you know, off the cliff. We're off the cliff now. We're so far off the cliff. 
And the strategy hasn't changed for these institutionalists. I mean, Chuck Schumer got on stage today and I wanted to barf when he started talking about the politicization and blaming uh, McConnell for Merrick Garland and, and the, exactly what you just said. But I have never heard him give a big roaring speech like that before. Now, now they put their foot down and these are just words. Oh, yeah, they'll fundraise. These off are just this. words. They'll they'll fundraise off of this. They'll they'll they're very happy to fundraise off of this. Even like, I'm sorry, Madison Cawthorn talked about Coke orgies. And there's coincidentally like five different stories on him in the paper uh, that you, uh, that uh, are about his, like, I don't know, whatever, inappropriate texts or yeah, pictures, you know, pictures that like may have a, a gay joke in them. I mean, the the under the underlying context of some of those stories are is homophobic, in my opinion. But regardless, that's clearly, in my opinion, coming out because uh, you have Tom Tillis trying to get him no, out of Congress. It's a coincidence. Right. It's a coincidence. We have done story after story about Joe Manchin's skeletons in his closet. You want to win? Ta go after his incredible corruption, which could be prosecuted, his children's totally. corruption in West Virginia. Do politics. Try to actually change things. Because now it's too late. Now it's time for a speech on the Senate floor. And then lots of damn fundraising emails about, you know, how uh, the, you need to vote because the right to an abortion is under attack. No, you need to... Get rid of the filibuster and enshrine it in law and do it now. Do it now. I mean, they're not going to, but in an ideal world, they would do that and they would do politics and they threaten mansion and cinema until they got what they wanted. Um, um, but don't you know it's just Bernie's fault? Mike uh, yeah. and, well, it's, it's, Mike and Berkeley says fault. on the IM says it's my failure. Mike and Berkeley, not me, Sam, but Mike and Berkeley's. In 1996, I was running to an exam at Berkeley and, uh, and I think he said surfed and then Scalia down a flight of stairs at the law library without killing him. If I hadn't failed my moment to affect history, Gore is president, 9-11 doesn't happen, Iraq War II, and this bullshit. So, I mean, you need the flap of to a seize wins. the moment, ladies yes. and gentlemen, if you're, and particularly if it's like going to be an accident. Surfing, is that, is that what he said, surfing? This is wrote, a, surfed. And that was Alito or Scalia? Yeah. Uh, Scalia. Both of uh, Alito was not in until uh, 2006. Right. Well, I mean, he, he could have been in Stanford or whatever, but yeah, uh, interesting. 